Vietnam, New Zealand step up economic ties. And in our cross talk, Vietnamese labor market and the industrial revolution 4.0. Welcome to this edition of BizLine on VTV International. I'm your host, Huang Hung, and let's now take a look at some economic highlights over the past week. Prime Minister Nguyen Xuân Phúc on Monday began his official visit to New Zealand and had a meeting with Mayor of Auckland where he suggested that Auckland as New Zealand's economic hub deep in cooperation with Vietnam's localities in education, science and technology, human resource development, urban planning, infrastructure development, high-tech agriculture and green energy. At the meeting between both countries' prime ministers on Tuesday, they agreed to strive for bilateral trade turnover of up to $2 billion US dollars by 2020. Prime Minister Phuc requested that New Zealand create favourable conditions for importing Vietnamese fruit and that New Zealand businesses boost investment in Vietnam. Addressing the Vietnam New Zealand Business Forum the same day, the Prime Minister assured 300 businesses and investors a favourable business environment in Vietnam and great potential to boost trade, especially with the newly signed Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. The Prime Minister also spoke with executives of several major New Zealand corporations. The Vietnam-Japan Economic Dialogue on Monday in Hanoi attracted about 50 businesses from both countries. The dialogue, jointly organised by the two countries' Chamber of Commerce and Industry, had two sessions, with the first one discussing business opportunities for the service sector in Vietnam. With a market of 95 million people, of which nearly 35% live in urban areas, Vietnam is considered one of the most attractive destinations for businesses from Japan's service sector. The second session focused on travel and transportation. Last year, the number of Vietnamese visitors to Japan exceeded 300,000. At the dialogue, businesses of the two countries expressed their expectation that the newly signed CPTPP would further promote economic and trade cooperation between Vietnam and Japan. According to the European Chamber of Commerce, or Eurocharm, nearly 90% of European businesses in Vietnam will maintain or increase their investment this year. More than 900 member enterprises of Eurocharm are optimistic about the business and investment environment of Vietnam in the past year. Eurocharm's member ranked the Business Climate Index at 77 in last year's fourth quarter. Most enterprises highly value the Vietnamese government's efforts in improving its business environment as well as the potential for development in the future. Notably, about 50 to 60 percent of enterprises hope to expand their investment in Vietnam, while 36 percent will maintain their recent investment and only 5 percent will reduce their investment. On Wednesday, the Vietnam Online Business Forum or VOBF 2018 took place in Hanoi, featuring four sessions discussing the growth of e-commerce, its impact on the economy, the impact of technology on e-commerce, and opportunity for young entrepreneurs to discuss successful startup with e-commerce. The Vietnam e-commerce indicator report 2018 was also released. According to the Vietnam e-commerce association, Vietnam's e-commerce growth in 2017 was more than 25%, which can be maintained from 2018 to 2020. For online retailers, information from thousands of e-commerce websites show a 35% increase in revenue growth last year. The indirect survey of some delivery companies show a 62% to 200% growth in delivery service revenue. According to information from National Payment Corporation of Vietnam or NAPAS, the number of domestic online transactions using domestic cards last year increased by 50% compared to the previous year, while the value of transaction up 75%. The Ministry of Industry and Trade has urged the U.S. government to consider excluding Vietnamese products from its newly announced tariff measures on imported steel and aluminium. The ministry stressed that Vietnamese steel and aluminium products sold to the U.S. are intended for use in civil construction, 
not for infrastructure or security defense purposes. Thus, it does not affect the U.S. goal of ensuring national security. Moreover, they only account for just a marginal proportion of the U.S. total imports. Therefore, they neither cause nor threaten to cause any damages to U.S. steel and aluminum industries. Meanwhile, experts said that the U.S. president's decision to impose tariffs on imported steel and aluminum products must go under the approval from the U.S. Congress, and even U.S. consumers will be hurt by this regulation. The Vietnam Steel Association is considering two options if the regulation is officially adopted, with one being giving recommendations to the trade remedies authorities so that the government reflects on the case at the WTO for consultation and the other including diplomatic channels to persuade the U.S. to revoke this decision. Currently, taxi associations from Hanoi, Da Nang and Ho Chi Minh City have just submitted a proposal to the Prime Minister on the Ministry of Transport Policy to continue piloting Grab and Uber services. Three taxi associations have petitioned to stop increasing the number of vehicles due to the number of Uber and Grab vehicles rising to 60,000, 1.8 times higher than traditional taxis in Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City. Taxi associations also recommend that Grab and Uber must be considered as business units. Hence, the management of these units must be contracted directly with drivers who must be responsible for settling all arising problems with clients and fulfilling their tax obligation to the state budget. The three taxi associations also said that the increase in number of Uber and Grab vehicles have caused issues for transportation plans. Those were some economic highlights over the past week. In the next part of BizLine, we will look into challenges to Vietnamese labour market and how to overcome those challenges. Vietnam is said to be in the first stage of the Industrial Revolution 4.0, which builds on the digital revolution using artificial intelligence and other smart technologies to optimize production. Experts say that without proper strategies, the advantage of having a large labor force may become a barrier for Vietnam in this revolution. So what are specific challenges to Vietnamese labor market? What can be done to protect workers while enterprises can still optimize their production and business. We will discuss this in this week's episode of BizLine. But first, let's take a look at the following clip to learn what this revolution is. The Industrial Revolution 4.0 signals the appearance of virtual management systems. This revolution also features the development of robots, artificial intelligence, 3D printers and tools in biological processes. Another distinctive feature is speed. In production processes, robotics are connected remotely to computer systems that are equipped with machine learning algorithms that can learn and control robotics with very little input from human operators. With the use of computers, productivity and output is more consistent while manual labor is reduced. For an in-depth discussion about the topic, our VTV reporter has talked with Ms. Miranda Wong, labor economist of the international labor organizations in Vietnam. Thank you so much for joining us. So uh, with the trend of automation and also technology application uh, in both production and businesses uh, to better catch up with um, the Industrial Revolution 4.0, in your opinion, what are the threats uh, to the Vietnamese labor market. This is uh, very common in all regions of the world and uh, this has happened already uh, decades ago. But maybe uh, nowadays uh, the, the, the pace at which uh, technological change are penetrating the industry is much, much faster than it used before to be before. In Vietnam, uh, one of uh, the most common uh, threats that is regularly brought forward is about the job loss. Um, indeed, uh, when automation uh, will uh, increasingly uh, uh, come into industry, 
there are certain categories of jobs and occupation that will be more threatened than other. And this uh, category of job includes uh, mainly uh, those involving uh, manual tasks. Uh, so these occupations are usually the less uh, occupied by the less skilled workers uh, and also uh, the most vulnerable group, including a woman, for example. In which sectors are employees uh, threatened to lose their jobs? In Vietnam, uh, manufacturing industries uh, is uh, driven by two critical sectors. Uh, one is about textile, clothing and footwear, and the other is about electronic and electrical products. And these uh, two sectors contribute uh, respectively approximately to uh, 36% of the manufacturing employment and about 5% of the manufacturing total employment in Vietnam. So in the future, uh, these two uh, industries will uh, receive more and more technology and more automation. So this means that workers in this industry will be uh, more threatened by automation. Usually, uh, um, these uh, workers in these industries are mainly uh, the less skilled workers but as well as uh, women workers. So these are, these are the most vulnerable uh, group that will uh, be the most likely uh, affected by uh, technological advancements at the workplace. Ten years ago, in order to produce one shirt, it took employees of this company about 40 minutes. However, it now only takes around 12 minutes. Such improvement in productivity is thanks to the use of automation in its production processes. In addition, manual labor has also been reduced. Riêng cái áo chúng tôi cần là ít nhất là hai người đính cúc và hai người thùa. Nhưng hiện nay thì khi chúng tôi áp dụng hệ thống tự động cho cái công đoạn này, thì một người có thể sử dụng được ba cái máy thùa và một người có thể sử dụng được hai cái máy đính. This is one of the many cases of utilizing automation and technology in production. The application of automation and technology has become more necessary for several manufacturing sectors. Môi trường kiểm soát nhiệt độ độ ẩm, hai là cái môi trường kiểm soát về chống tinh điện trong những linh kiện điện tử nó rất là quan trọng trong cái sản phẩm phần đấy. Nó sẽ quyết định cái tuổi thọ của sản phẩm ở cái bộ ruột. Cho nên cái việc mà áp dụng cái công nghệ là SMT là bắt buộc trong công ty và Cái công nghệ này hoàn toàn tự động trên một dây chuyền thì với một công nhân sản xuất. With this trend, large labor forces and cheap labor costs will no longer be an advantage for Vietnam due to the lack of high skills among labor forces. Theo con số theo dõi của Viện Công nhân Công đoàn chúng tôi mới chỉ có 28%. Công nhân lao động trong 16 triệu lao động chỉ có 28% thôi được đào tạo cơ bản có nghề và ở trình độ cao. Còn lại nó vẫn nằm ở cái loại chưa được đào tạo hoặc đào tạo ở mức độ thấp. Đỉnh điểm cao nhất là vào trong những năm 2016-2017, các doanh nghiệp đều phải đối mặt với một tình trạng thiếu hụt lao động và cái nhu cầu tuyển dụng cũng tăng lên rất là nhiều. Một trong những nguyên nhân thì được đánh giá là là do nhu cầu tuyển dụng cũng như là nhu cầu của các doanh nghiệp về các kỹ năng cụ thể tăng lên. Đồng thời bên cạnh đó thì một trong những cái xu hướng được nhận thấy là máy móc và robot sẽ dần dần thay thế con người. According to the International Labour Organization, Vietnam is one of the countries with a labour force that is most affected by the Industrial Revolution 4.0. Specifically, its forecast shows that 86% of Vietnamese workers in the textile sector face the risk of losing their jobs in the next two decades due to technological advancements. Along with the risk of uh, losing their jobs, what are the other risks um, that labor may face during the Industrial Revolution 4.0? For sure, uh, there is new forms of jobs and employment that are arising with the use of ICT. The nature of job uh, is changing and uh, this is uh, something that uh, we uh, were not uh, very familiar with it before, but now there are what we call a non-standard form of employment. Uh, that, that are emerging. 
so with this new form of employment, uh, it becomes more and more difficult uh, to protect workers and to know what is happening in the labor market because everything changes uh, very fast. The traditional uh, employment, uh, employer, employer, employee relationship becomes more blurry with the ICT tools and you can uh, perform your job anywhere in the world. So the threat or the risk behind is how to ensure that we protect uh, those workers. So what kind of shifts can we see in the labor market with this industrial revolution? With these technological changes, there are really a lot of new forms of jobs and employment that will arise, notably in uh, service sectors uh, and uh, customer-oriented uh, jobs. So this new form of employment includes web entrepreneur, for example, uh, digital marketing, uh, freelancing, all these kind of jobs uh, use internet platform to perform uh, the job. Besides that, there are other uh, category of jobs where also you use uh, application uh, to perform your job, for example, through uh, Grab and Uber and uh, also the, all the taxi drivers use uh, this uh, ICT tool. What are the skills um, uh, that employees need to prepare and uh, to promote in order to better uh, meet the demand of enterprises and also uh, to catch up with the changes in the labor market? This is a very important question. Uh, skills development and human resource development is crucial, uh, especially in the context of rapid, very rapid technological changes. I think the most important uh, uh, skills uh, that are required in this context is to have both what we call core and technical skills and uh, soft skills. Technical skills is uh, about engineer, for example, and all those skills related to STEM, so science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And on the other side, there are core or soft skills, which are much linked to uh, the capacity to adapt uh, to the working environment, the capacity to think uh, out of the box, the capacity to uh, work in teams, the capacity of um, of using creativity at the workplace. Employer uh, requires a, a lot, both of this set of skills. Because we know that technology will not replace human. Technology doesn't have emotional intelligence that uh, human do. So uh, that's why it's very important to have this both set of skills. This company replaced a manual labor with 1,000 robotic arms in the assembly process of bobs and live tubes in 2017. As a result, manual labor has been reduced by five workers per production chain. If those workers only needed simple skills for tasks, they are now required to have different and more advanced skills for other tasks that machinery cannot replace. Cái việc mà sản xuất trên những dây chuyền công nghệ hiện đại như này thì nó đòi hỏi cái trình độ tay nghề của cái người công nhân là rất là cao. À, nếu như ngày xưa ấy, thì à, chúng ta chỉ cần là dạy cho những người ta những một vài những cái động tác cơ bản để người ta có thể là làm được trên dây chuyền. Thế nhưng ngày nay tôi cần phải đào tạo những cái công nhân là rất là ngành lành nghề trong cái việc mà từ cái việc thao tác vận hành bảo dưỡng đến các cái quy trình sản xuất để thực hiện những cái hoạt động như này. Đối với những cái kỹ năng đơn giản và những công việc đơn giản thì thực ra là dần dần máy móc họ sẽ thay thế. À, bản thân các doanh nghiệp họ sẽ mong muốn người lao động phải làm được những công việc phức tạp hơn so với những công việc hiện tại. As we say that employees also need to improve their soft skills. However, according to the Total Workforce Index by Manpower Group, many Vietnamese workers still lack essential skills like problem solving and IT. Meanwhile, only 5% of the country's workforce is English proficient. Some say that besides the threats that labor can face, um, there are also opportunities for them uh, to better use the um, technologies to increase their productivity and also efficiency in their work. What do you think about this um, opinion? I do think personally that there are much more opportunities than threats. It all depends on how you see things. 
So among the opportunities, I think technology has brought so much uh, to workers and to the population by easing tasks. So by replacing the tasks which are cumbersome for workers, they are now replaced by machines. So it allows workers to perform jobs uh, which are in task, we are, which are more productive, but also more fulfilling and less cumbersome. So this is, for example, in the industry sector. But in other uh, sectors, uh, like in the service sector, there are new uh, sort of jobs, uh, form of employment that are arising with technology. And this brings a lot of opportunity as long as you know how to use technology. Vietnam has a still a strong uh, and a high share of the population in the agriculture sector. It's about 40% of the labor force now working in the agriculture sector. And this is uh, a sector that shouldn't be uh, underestimated because there are a um, lot of new jobs uh, that can emerge through the use of ICT. Uh, not only emerge, but or maybe um, where uh, jobs can um, can be better performed uh, through ICT. Consumers now are, are more and more interested, for example, to know what is uh, happening in their kitchen. Basically knowing where do the product and the, the agriculture product come from. Uh, they are more and more conscious about uh, the food that they're eating and they want to know uh, where do the food come from. So ICT tool, uh, in a sense, can be used for new type of businesses in the agriculture uh, to uh, connect uh, the agriculture uh, producers directly to the consumers. And this can uh, be really facilitated by the use of ICT tools, but also in a way to more uh, marketize uh, your product to a wider uh, audience than, uh, than before. In your opinion, in which way can enterprises um, change their uh, human resource training and also strategies uh, in order to better use their labor and also to protect their workers? I think, uh, yes, um, enterprise and employer have the responsibility uh, to train their workers to adapt to the new technology that come uh, at the enterprise level. So uh, what I said is, a, uh, is more about lifelong training, the importance of really updating and reskilling uh, your skills uh, continuously through your career uh, lifetime. Uh, so enterprise can put a lot of different uh, policies and practice at the workplace that really value the individual uh, well-being. It can be through uh, upgrading the what we call the more technical skills on the use of ICT or uh, other type of skills. Uh, but also uh, can enterprise can introduce uh, other uh, type of training uh, uh, that involves a more personal development. So this is something that, is or that will also rise, but also that will help the individual uh, to perform well and to, to be uh, well in his job but also will help to bond uh, with a team, uh, with the team and with colleagues, and, uh, and will forge a, a common sense of identity uh, within the enterprise culture. Beyond that, uh, enterprise can also partner with uh, TVET, the system, TVET education, so vocational education and training system outside of the enterprise. Uh, um, so they can establish partnership with schools regarding internship, apprenticeship, so that means uh, training uh, young people and students in their workplace so that young people understand and know what type of requirements are, uh, are necessary for the labor market. Practical training is part of this company's human resource development. Training sessions like these are held once every quarter. Chuyên gia riêng của trong các cái hợp tác của dự án hay là các cái chuyên gia của Mỹ phối hợp với chúng tôi để mà có thể là đào tạo kèm cặp ngay trên dây chuyền đối với các cái công nhân. Qua đó người ta rút ngay được những cái bài học kinh nghiệm trên cái dây chuyền và thực hiện hoạt động cải tiến trong trên từng khâu một. A number of other enterprises have established their own vocational schools for human resource training. 
chúng tôi lại là một nhà sản xuất công nghiệp cho những cái hãng thời trang trên thế giới. Chính vì vậy là chúng tôi luôn luôn được cập nhật những cái gì mới nhất về thiết kế, về công nghệ và về sản phẩm. Trường Cao đẳng Nghề Long Biên là trường trực thuộc Tổng công ty May 10. Mới vào học thôi là sinh viên đã được tiếp cận những cái phần mềm của các nhà phát triển phần mềm giác mẫu như là Gerber, như là Lectra. Meanwhile, vocational schools and universities are changing their training strategies to provide better human resources that are equipped with appropriate skills. New courses including automatic welding, automatic assembly, operating skills and using robotic arms have been added to this vocational training school for nearly a year. Đào tạo ra con người thực hiện các cái doanh ở trong các doanh nghiệp mà sử dụng công nghệ 4.0. Như vậy bản thân trường chúng tôi đã phải sắm những thiết bị phục vụ cho đào tạo nhân lực cho cái cái thế hệ công nghiệp 4.0. Năm 2018, 2019 tới đây thì chúng tôi sẽ uh, mở uh, chuyên ngành uh, logistics và quản lý chuỗi cung ứng định hướng nghề nghiệp quốc tế. Đấy thì đây đây là một trong chuyên ngành rất hay khớp bởi vì là là nó sẽ uh, có rất nhiều yếu tố công nghệ và càng ngày người ta càng nhìn thấy là 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 kinh doanh là một hệ thống và hệ thống này vận hành với những cái điều kiện về tự động hóa, vận hành với những điều kiện về về kỹ thuật và công nghệ rất là, rất là nhiều. Jobs related to increased interaction with machinery and associated with the Internet of Things are now considered a priority for vocational and university training. How can uh, vocational schools and also universities uh, change their curriculum in order to uh, meet the demand of students uh, in the way that they can meet um, the requirements of enterprises in the future? Training schools should use this opportunity of introducing ICT tools into their curricula. And I guess that this is something uh, missing in Vietnam and this is something that can be really thought through, uh, through a collaboration, so through understanding what is happening in the labor market. And to understand what is the demand on the labor market, you need a strong collaboration and partnership with the private sector and with policy makers. Actually, the use of ICT tool to reach more and more people and expand uh, the, so the outreach of uh, education, uh, the, the, there's really a lot of opportunities um, because we can use uh, ICT platform to really promote uh, education and training to reach people, for example, in the rural area that don't have access uh, to a training institution, for example, because the training is far away, then they can actually learn online. So this can, uh, the, if it's uh, rightly uh, targeted, uh, training can really reach a much more wider audience and including the most disadvantaged. It also, uh, beyond the most disadvantaged group, it can also concern uh, people who actually work uh, at the moment and who have family commitment. They can uh, still keep uh, ongoing with uh, learning, upgrading their skills uh, through uh, uh, training, online training, if they were available. What are the other solutions uh, you can suggest in order to solve um, the problems and also to deal with challenges? Uh, in the labor market in Vietnam? At multiple level, every, all action can be done at individual, collective or enterprise level. Uh, at the individual level, I cannot emphasize more the need to foster this curiosity, uh, this uh, willingness to learn, uh, to learn and to adapt. And this is really a personal belief and something that, uh, that is a responsibility of all individuals uh, to progress uh, in the career and also uh, to progress uh, himself. At the enterprise level, it's uh, obviously uh, ab uh, updating and promoting human resource uh, development and well-being is uh, fundamental and crucial for uh, productivity increase uh, at the workplace. Usually, employers complain a lot about uh, the mismatch uh, between the skills of workers and the demand uh, in the labor market. 
So I think that uh, in this respect, we need a strong collaboration between first the private sector, uh, policy maker, and education and training system to make sure that the skills, the type of skills and education that is proposed by the schools and uh, universities are adequate and respond to the fast changing needs uh, of the labour market. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Apart from human resource training, experts also suggest that more research and forecasts of labour markets should be done. This is aimed to help enterprises, vocational schools and universities orient their training more properly. In addition, workers can be more up-to-date with changes in the market and understand new requirements of their employers. As such, they can better adapt to technological changes in the Industrial Revolution 4.0. And that also wraps up BizLine for this week. For more news and updates, please log on to vtv4.vn or our YouTube channel at vtv4go. Thank you for watching and until next time. Thank you.